Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to our series on the ligaments of the knee and the menisci. In this video, we're going to be looking at the anatomy, the function, and some important special tests for the posterior cruciate ligament. If you want to learn about the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, go back to the previous video. Here we're going to be looking at the PCL. So a lot of these ligaments up here we covered in the previous video, so we're going to go straight into talking about the PCL, which we see right here. So what we're looking at in this picture is we're looking at a superior view of the tibia. So the femur has been removed. We're looking down on the plateau of the tibia. Okay. Up here is anterior. We can tell that because this is really where that tibial tubercle begins. We can see the patellar ligament running inferiorly to actually insert on the tibial tubercle or tibial tuberosity. Right? Um, over here is the medial aspect, and this is the medial meniscus. Over here is the lateral aspect. This is the lateral meniscus. And if you couldn't tell which is medial or lateral, uh, you can see the fibula right here. So this must be the lateral side. Okay? And then right here is the PCL. Okay? Now the PCL connects part of the tibia to part of the femur. But when we look at the origin and the insertion of the PCL, it's more helpful to consider the proximal attachment, up by the femur that is, to be the origin. And then it runs down, it runs inferiorly to insert on the distal attachment, which would be the tibia. So let's look at this. The PCL's origin is going to be the medial femoral condyle. We can't see that here, but we'll look at that in just a minute on another picture. It's really the anterolateral surface of the medial femoral condyle. And it runs downward, and it's then going to insert on the posterior aspect of the tibial plateau right here. Here's the tibial plateau running all around here. This is its posterior aspect. Okay? Let's get a better view of that in this picture. Right? So right here, we're looking at an anterior view of the knee. Down here is the tibia. We know this is anterior because here's your tibial tuberosity. We can only see that anteriorly. Over here is the fibula, so this side must be lateral. Therefore, over here is medial. Okay? We covered that ACL in the previous video. We can see that from an anterior view, the PCL runs behind it, which makes sense. It's the PCL, posterior cruciate ligament. Now remember with the ACL, from the previous video, we said that as it goes down from the femur, it runs medially and anteriorly. Okay? So as it goes down toward the tibia, origin to insertion, it runs medially and anteriorly. We really can't see that anterior nature here. But when we look at the PCL, it's going to do the exact opposite. So up here is its origin. And that's that uh, anterolateral uh, surface of the medial femoral condyle. Medial condyle is over here of the femur, right? Here's its anterolateral surface. And it's going to run down towards the tibia. But as it does, this one's going to run laterally and posteriorly, right? ACL, as it ran down, went uh, anteriorly and medially. This one's going to go posteriorly and laterally. Okay. And as it runs down, notice it crosses behind that ACL. It actually crosses behind the ACL, thus the name cruciate. Cruciate actually means cross. And then it's going to insert down here on the tibia, again, at that posterior aspect of the tibial plateau. We can see that a little bit better here. So here in this picture, we can see the lateral movement of the PCL as it goes down. We can't really see that um, posterior movement. And so to do that, we'll look at this picture. So we saw something similar for the ACL. Here's your femur up here. And we're looking at a lateral view, right? Because here's the fibula. We can see that. This is a lateral view of the knee. Here's your tibia right there, right? And back here's posterior here's anterior. So as that PCL runs down, remember it runs laterally, we can't see that here, but it runs posteriorly. Okay? Now, one of the jobs of PCL is to restrict posterior translation of the tibia relative to the femur. The ACL did the opposite. It restricted anterior tibial translation. PCL restricts posterior tibial translation. Okay, So, Let's translate the tibia posteriorly. Here it's translated posteriorly a little bit, right? 
And as we move the tibia posteriorly relative to the femur, again, we stretch that PCL. But the PCL here is still intact. It's stretched a little bit, certainly, but it's still intact and it's healthy. But let's say at this point right there, we've reached that limit of posterior tibial translation. What happens if we move that tibia even more posteriorly? Well, the PCL might rupture. Okay? So the PCL's main job is to serve as the primary restraint to posterior tibial translation, which could also be described as anterior femoral translation, but generally you put it in terms of the tibia. But if we do too much posterior, uh, tibial translation, that PCL can rupture. And again, here I've just shown it coming directly off of the tibia. It could also rupture somewhere in the middle, right? It could rupture closer to the femur, okay? But generally it's going to be somewhere in the middle. I've just shown it here for the sake of simplicity. So coming back here, the PCL's primary job is to serve as a primary restraint to excessive posterior tibial translation. Or we could also term that in terms of the femur, excessive anterior femoral translation, but that's the same as posterior tibial translation. It's also going to serve as a secondary restraint to excessive rotation. So the ACL was also a restraint to excessive rotation. Uh, this one's also going to be a restraint to that, but the restraint here is typically going to be between 90 and 120 degrees of knee flexion. So it's not going to restrain rotation as much in the extended position. You're going to have to flex the knee uh, before the PCL starts uh, restricting rotation. But again, in a flexed position, if you start rotating excessively, you're going to stretch that PCL and it can tear. All right, now let's take a look at some special tests that we can use to rule up or rule down a PCL tear. We have the SAG sign test, and also called the posterior SAG sign. And then we have the posterior drawer test, and we're actually going to start with this one because it's very similar to one that we saw in the ACL uh, special tests in the previous video, and that was the anterior drawer test. If you look at these two, they're virtually the same, except the direction of the force. So anterior drawer test was used for an ACL, now posterior drawer is for a PCL. Makes sense. So the patient's pos positioned in supine, buttock and their foot resting on the table, and the knee is going to be up at about 90 degrees like this. Okay? Uh, with this, again, like the anterior drawer test, the PT or the practitioner, whoever it might be, is going to reach around with both hands. You can't see the left hand, but you can see the right one, reaching around the back of the gastroc, really taking up a good skin lock there, uh, getting some stability right there for the tibia. And then instead of translating it anteriorly, now you're going to translate it posteriorly. So the only real difference between the anterior and posterior draw test is the direction that we're moving the tibia, right? So whichever leg we're going to test on, we're going to bring the knee up to about 90 degrees like this. Hips are going to be at about 45 degrees. So when we do this, often what we'll do is actually put a little bit of weight on the patient's foot just because as we start to move the tibia, we don't want the foot to be moving. We want the motion to be isolated at the tibia relative to the femur. So what we'll do is we're going to reach around with both hands right around to the gastroc, so the back of the calf, and take up a good skin lock there like this. And then when we loop our thumbs around, it'll be roughly on the tibial tuberosity. Posterior drawer test pushes posteriorly. So we're going to translate the tibia posteriorly like that. And again, we should expect a firm end feel. If we had a mushy end feel, that would indicate a torn PCL. Remember, the PCL is primary restraint to posterior translation. So if it's ruptured, you should expect to see excessive posterior translation. And again, a positive test here is going to be that mushy end feel that you see here in this short video. Okay, And in general, for it to be positive, that translation needs to be at least six millimeters greater than on the unaffected side. So when you do this test, you're going to do the unaffected side first because there is going to be a little bit of posterior translation, right? But in order to be positive, it has to be six millimeters or greater on the affected side than the unaffected side, okay? So that's your posterior drawer test. Now let's look at the SAG sign or the posterior SAG sign test.
Okay. Um, let me first show you the video of how this is done, and then we'll go back and look at this, which is actually a positive test. The sag sign test, you don't need to use any force. All you're going to do is allow gravity to pull that tibia posteriorly. All right. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to have the hips and knees at 90 degrees. Okay. And it just look like this. Technically, all we're doing is holding this right here. We could put the heel of her foot on something like a chair. Um, we can just hold this, but we want the leg to be as static as possible. I might even sit down right here. Just put it right there. Pretty easy to hold it like that. Now, normally, the person's not going to have a PCL tear. So what we should see is if we follow from the patella across here, it's going to be relatively straight and flat. Okay? But remember, with a torn PCL, we have excessive posterior translation. So what will gravity do to the tibia? It'll pull it down. And so you'll actually see this on the PowerPoint slide, but you'll actually see if there's a PCL tear, there's going to be kind of a divot. Tibia is going to go down right past the patella, and that is the sag. And when somebody has that sag sign, that's indicative of a PCL tear. So hopefully you saw the patient positioning. Femur here is going directly up. Here's the knee joint at 90 degrees. Tibia then goes out horizontally. And again, we're probably going to rest the foot on something. But I would actually recommend putting the foot up on something stable so that way you can kind of back up as the practitioner and really eyeball this. This right here is a positive sag sign or a positive test. Okay? And what we're doing is we're reproducing the same thing that the posterior drawer test did, posterior tibial translation. The only difference here is that we're having to use our own force. We're not having to use any force here. Why? Gravity is the force. It's really the weight of the entire lower leg here that's causing the proximal part of this tibia to translate down and excessively. And down in the picture would correspond to posterior translation of the tibia relative to the femur. Okay? Now, between these two tests, the posterior drawer test has a better sensitivity of 90%, meaning if you have somebody that has a negative posterior drawer test, um, there's a 90% chance that they don't have a PCL tear. The sensitivity of the SAG sign test is worse. And so if you're looking to simply rule out a PCL tear, you're going to use the posterior drawer test. Now, when it comes to ruling in a PCL tear, it really doesn't matter which one you use. Um, they both have pretty darn good specificities. This one's the worst one. 99% still pretty good, meaning if somebody has a positive posterior drawer test, there's a 99% chance they have a PCL tear. Specificity for the SAG sign is even better, 100%. If they have this positive SAG sign, they have a PCL tear. Now, like the ACL special test, these values for sensitivity and specificity are derived ultimately from chronic injuries, or at least subacute, um, not from acute injuries. Um, and that's important to understand because when you have an acute PCL tear, there's a lot of things that happen in the knee, right? you have joint effusion. So there's a lot of swelling that goes in there. And that swelling is fluid that can take up space. And anything that takes up space restricts movement. So you could have a situation where there's a lot of swelling in there right after the injury occurs, but you don't get much posterior translation. And so it might be a false negative when in reality, they actually do have a PCL tear. So if it's an acute injury and you note that there's a lot of swelling in there, you probably should test it multiple times um, and then wait a little bit, wait till that swelling calms down a little bit and then test it again because you may actually get the positive result um, after a little bit of time. The other thing that can happen with an acute injury is you can get compensation by the quadriceps. Okay, in the ACL tear, uh, we have excessive anterior tibial translation, right? And so the hamstrings may actually isometrically fire to keep that tibia from going too far anteriorly, right? So the hamstrings are compensating. The opposite's true of the posterior drawer test. We have excessive posterior translation, so we might actually get some quadriceps firing to compensate to keep the, the tibia from going too far posteriorly, okay? So again, when you do these tests, particularly the posterior drawer test, you wanna kinda make sure that 
the patient is as relaxed as possible because if the quadriceps are firing pretty hard, you may actually also get a false negative there on the posterior drawer test. So just take those things into consideration. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the anatomy, the function, and the special test for the PCL. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be going over the collateral ligaments. Those would be the MCL and the LCL. So make sure to join us then. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.